Good morning. About time to begin. If you're visiting with us, we're glad that you're here and invite you to come back anytime you can be with us. Members and visitors alike, we ask that you take an attendance card from the back of the seat in front of you and fill those out and pass them to the outside aisles and they'll be picked up shortly. Those that we want to remember on a prayer request list, John West remains at Encompass for rehabilitation and he will meet with an oncologist Monday and hopes to come home later this week. David Baird is recovering from knee surgery, and it's good to see David out with us this morning. And Terry Thomas is at home recovering from gallbladder surgery. And Pat and Belinda Arthur, which are the parents of David Arthur, are recovering at home from COVID. And also Carol Cummings is at home with COVID. Upcoming activities, the Navigating Grace Bible class will meet this evening at 5. The annual youth group parents meeting will be today following the morning services and there will be a short meeting but we need new medical consent forms and updated insurance information. Also ladies there will be a brunch on February the 12th from 9 to 10 in the fellowship hall. This is for all the ladies of the congregation and there is a sign up sheet in the lobby. couple of thank you cards I'd like to read this morning. Dear brothers and sisters, I have delayed long enough a well-deserved thank you to each of you. I have received many cards, letters, and phone calls, all of which make me feel important and loved. For this, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. As to the work of the church, this attitude of love and caring must go forward. The leadership are not the only ones to become involved. It takes every Christian's love to do proper justice. Again, thanks to all, John West. Another thank you card. I want to say thank you so much to the elders for the trip to Moonlight and for the meal. That was so nice of you. In Christian love, Mary Taylor. Those who will be serving their worship services this morning, our opening prayer will be by Micah Busby. Our song leader will be David Arthur. The Lord's Supper devotional will be by Chad McPherson. Scripture reading will be by Mark Springer. The lesson this morning will be by David Salisbury. And our closing prayer will be by J.B. Slaughter. With all the announcements I have, and we'll begin our worship service.
Would you bow with me? Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for this good day. Grateful that we could be together this morning to focus on you and worship you and sing these songs of praise to you. Father, we're so thankful for all the many wonderful blessings we have in life, for we know all these good things come from you. Grateful to be together this morning to study more from your word and pray that we'll all be encouraged from it. So grateful for your church that meets here, all its many good works. Pray, Father, your blessings upon each of them. It will be a light in this community. Father, we're so thankful for all our young people and their desire to learn more from you about your word and pray that you'll be with them in the decisions they make in life. Pray you'll be with their parents as they give them support. Father, we're so thankful for our elders. Continue to pray that you be with them and the decisions they make and as they lead your church here. Father, we're also grateful for the greatest blessing that we all have in our Savior, Jesus. We ask all these things in his name. Amen. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield, to you of the Lord's Supper and getting those prepared. Each first day of the week, we're invited to participate in this time of communion together with one another. This time in our service is really significant. Sometimes we take that for granted and it's another act of service, but this time is really significant. We use it to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made to take away our sins, but also to welcome us into God's family. Jesus wanted this time in our service to be significant. If we look at Jesus and what he was doing before he was crucified, before he went to the cross, he was spending time with his friends. And when we look at Jesus in that moment, we understand the importance of communion. We were in need, and he gave us the only gift that could take care of our imperfections and restore our relationship with God. This freed us from the penalty of sin. So this morning, as we participate together in communion, we get to participate even though we're not deserving, but because Jesus gave us an avenue. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we 
love you. We thank you so much for this time of communion together. We're so thankful for Jesus, and it's his body that we reflect on as we take this bread. We pray that we do it in a manner pleasing to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. pray together. As we continue our thanks, Lord, we're thankful for Jesus and the blood that he shed that continues to, to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from our sins, Lord. And as we partake of this cup, we pray that we'll do it in a pleasing manner. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In the pew, there will be small bags for you to place the content, some rain contents in. As a matter of convenience, we'll use this time in our service to give us the opportunity to give back um, for the work of the church. Uh, there are areas in the back where you can leave your contribution. You can do that online, or you're welcome to stop by the church and drop that off throughout the week as well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are enormously blessed from the simplest things in life down to our warm buildings and our homes and our jobs. The blessings that we receive each and every day are oftentimes taken for granted. Father, as we know that we are commanded and instructed to give back, Father, as we're given this opportunity, we pray that we all do it generously. We pray that we all do it in a way that is responsible and that we're we're stewards over the blessings that you have given us in a good way. Lord, we also pray for the leadership of our church as they steward over what we uh, what is collected. And we pray, Lord, that all of those funds be used in a proper manner. We pray that they introduce more people to your church and to Jesus. And we pray that the works here will continue to be blessed. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This is holy ground, we're standing on holy ground, for the Lord is present and where He is, is holy. This is holy ground, we're standing on holy ground, for 
Our lesson this morning is from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for being here this morning. It is good to be together. I know we have several that are joining us online as well, and we appreciate you doing that and look forward to having you back with us in person every chance you get. Things do look a little bit different in here. I know our online folks especially have a couple of wires that are hanging down in front of the camera, and you'll notice a few extra wires in the back and around. We've had electricians out here all this week, and next week we hope that turns into an upgraded sound system. Some of you have struggled to hear a little bit we're going to work on that as well as an upgrade to our projector and a few things that we've been needing to do in order to, uh, to to get those things modernized a little bit I'm excited about that it's been something we've been talking about for uh, quite a while now and glad that we're able to do that bear with us as we do a little bit of construction in here I don't know if you saw the news last week. There were so many different stories to keep up with, but I love the story that came out of Pennsylvania. On Monday, Coach Brian DeLalo at Bethel Park High School near Pittsburgh told his football team, due to the bad weather, workouts are canceled. He posted online, Monday's weightlifting workout has been canceled. Find an elderly or a disabled neighbor and shovel their driveway and don't accept any money for it. And in a few hours, 27 football players took to the snow-encrusted streets of Bethel Park, their boots tightly laced, shovels slung over their shoulder, earbuds firmly planted in their ears, and they spent the entire day shoveling driveways and got in a way better workout than they would have weightlifting and learned a lot bigger lesson. Or maybe you heard the story out of Atlanta. It was a fellow named John who was eating at his favorite local breakfast diner there. And he looks across the street and there's a lady who's attempting to open a car with a coat hanger. He figures out she's actually breaking into the car. He excused himself and walked over to her. And he approached gently because John's a pretty big man. Tips the scales at about 280 and his hands are really big. And he just asked her, what you doing? She froze. And next, John asked her to join him for breakfast or else he was going to call the cops. And she thought about it for just a minute and said, I'd be delighted. They didn't have some big heart-to-heart talk, but the woman did tell John that the car belonged to her boyfriend who was refusing to pay child support. I can't even afford food for my son, she admitted. So John offered her a job at his construction business, managing his office. She accepted, and last week she started work. And so far, things have been working out famously well. After work a few days ago, she approached him with watery eyes and said, why are you being so nice to me? And John just answered, I don't think anybody needs a reason to be nice. You know, we've been talking about this is my story. And as we've talked about our story, the story that we're telling with our life, your life is a story that you tell every day. And we said, we want to tell it well. We want to live it well. And truthfully, our story is going to be a good one. We're living through a a once-in-a-century time. Our world has changed forever. And what do you want to be able to tell your kids and your grandkids about how you lived your life during this time? Who will you tell them about? Because your story is a story of faith. Your story has heroes in it. Every story has a hero, and so does yours. There's more to your story than just facts. It won't just be dates and times and places. It'll be a story, a story of triumph over adversity, a story of hardships, a story of, hey, I didn't know if we were going to make it through, but by God's grace, we did. A story of triumph and sometimes a story of failure, a story of success, but more than that, it's a story of faith. Your story, my story, the story we all tell is a story of faith. Where do we put our faith? Hebrews 11 and verse 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's the story of your life. That's the story of all of our lives. There's been faith that you've had. Sometimes it was faith in other people. You said, you know what? I put my faith, I put my trust in other people. Sometimes it's a story of faith that people had in you. They put their trust in you. And if you're a Christian, it's a story of faith in Almighty God and of people of faith who play a part in your story. Hebrews chapter 11 is a story of Bible heroes. Sometimes we call it the Faith Hall of Fame. 
family. It's heroes of faith. It's like a hall of fame, but it's personal. In that case, it's heroes that, that we know. And when all has been said and done and all of Hebrews 11 is over and he's run through all those heroes of faith, the writer says, therefore, we also, he makes it personal, you and I, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. You see, when you tell your story, your story and my story, it's impacted by the stories of other people who are heroes of faith to you. You have a cloud of witnesses, as do I. Who is it that's made a difference in your faith? As you look at your life, who is it that you would say, you know what, they stepped up. Maybe it was a preacher or a youth minister or a Bible class teacher. Maybe it was an elder or a deacon at church. And you look back and you say, they stepped in at a critical moment in my life. They made a difference because of how they cared. Maybe it was a parent or a grandparent that said, hey, we're going to church right now, every Sunday. Who was it that showed you Jesus? Who was it that took you to church? Who was it that taught you to love the word of God or to love others like God loves? Who is it that encouraged you? When you were so down at that moment, you thought, I don't know if I can get through this. Who was it that stepped in to encourage you? Who was it when you messed up, who could have just complained and pointed it out, but instead they built you up and helped you get through a tough time? Who was it that taught you about grace and that showed you truth? When you tell your story, who are the heroes? Because your story is impacted by the stories of other people. Your story has heroes of faith in it. Hebrews 11 and verse 3 says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. In other words, by faith, this story of mine, it's bigger than me. God can do things beyond my understanding. By faith, I realize God is at work in ways that I can't quite wrap my mind around. There's more people than just me in God's story. There's more people than just me in my own story. He's been working on things sometimes for generations that came to fruition in my life. He's been active long before I was born so that I could come back or so that I could come to faith. And when I look back, I can look all the way back to creation and I can see that God can do things beyond my ability to fathom. God is bigger than me and he's in control of more than I can understand. But your story is your own. And as much as other people have an impact on it, as much as there are heroes of faith in your story and mine and they have important roles to play, the truth is you are the hero of your story. Now, there may be times you say, I'm a tragic hero. I'm a hero with a fatal flaw. I'm a hero who stumbled, but you are the hero of your story. And maybe you can point out and say, yeah, I made some bad decisions, but I learned from them. I've grown through them. Hebrews 11 tells us about these other heroes and their stories. And as you read their stories of faith, all of us, because we know the scriptures would say, hey, I recognize that story. And that was a person who stumbled, who had hardship and who grew through it. And so let's take a quick look at some heroes of faith. Hebrews 11 verses 4 and 5, by faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And through it all, he being dead still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he didn't see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. See, I learned from heroes of faith. I learned that faith leads me to obey God no matter what. I learned from heroes like Abel and Enoch that the best decision I can make is to walk with God every day, to do whatever he asks me to do, because that's what heroes of faith do. The writer of Hebrews goes on, he says in verse 7, By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. You see, I can learn from Noah. And I learned that by faith, I learned heroes of faith, they trust God even when they can't see what he sees. 
God looks and says, Noah, it's going to rain. And Noah says, what's rain? And God says, trust me. God looks and says, Noah, it's going to flood. And he said, there's not even water nearby. And God says, trust me. And Noah says, okay, you can see stuff I can't see. And God says, Noah, build a boat, a really big boat. And he says, God, you're going to have to help me out on that. And God said, here's the plans. And Noah said, okay, I'll build it. I learned from heroes like Noah that I trust God. And I learned that trusting God can save your life, even your eternal life. Hebrews 11 goes on and says, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance, and he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise, for he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Abraham followed God. We've seen that already in faith. God says, go. Abraham said, okay, where are we going? God says, trust me. And Abraham said, okay. And Abraham trusted God. And God said, Abraham, we're here. And he said, great. When is it mine? And he says, well, it's going to be yours. Actually, it's not going to be yours in your lifetime or even your kid's lifetime or your grandkid's lifetime. But it's all going to be your kids one day. Your great, great, great grandkids will have this whole thing. And Abraham learned to be patient. Abraham learned to live a life of faith, to trust God for the long haul. Abraham waited a long time to see his dreams come true, and some of those dreams he only saw by faith because they happened after his life was over. But Abraham learned that faith is in it for the long haul. It's a lifelong commitment, not just for today. We go on and we see his wife, Sarah, by faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and, for, and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Can you imagine Sarah's heartache and heartbreak? The hope that then died away. She said, but God promised so much so that she said, maybe, maybe he promised for somebody else. Maybe it wasn't for me. Maybe I wasn't supposed to be the one. So she said, Abraham, take Hagar, and let's see if maybe God's promise was actually for her. Maybe I was never part of the plan in the first place. And then later, Sarah figured out, oh, that wasn't the plan. And she thought, maybe I messed it all up. Maybe I ruined it. Maybe I broke it. But in the end, from two folks as good as dead, God did something amazing. And he blessed the whole world. Faith perseveres through disappointments, through heartaches, through hard times. And God was able to do something great through Abraham and Sarah. I wonder what he can do through you and through me. We go back to Abraham. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. By faith, I learn about Abraham that heroes of faith believe, you know what, I'm better with God than without him, no matter what. If God says do something, I'm going to do it. Even if it doesn't make sense to me, even if I wonder how in the world I'll live through all of this, I'm better off with God than any other place. And so Abraham learned, even if I have to give up Isaac, I'll trust God. And God can take care of this. Whatever it costs, it's worth it to follow God because he's the only one who can fix the problems in my life. He's the only one who can set wrongs to right. So Abraham learned, even if I have to give up Isaac, God's the only one who could restore him to me. I'll follow God no matter what because being with God is better than anything else. Go forward a couple of generations by faith, Jacob, when he was dying blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning on top of his staff by faith. Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. Heroes of faith, man, they look forward to heaven. The writer of Hebrews has already said, Abraham was looking to a city whose builder and maker is God. 
but they also look forward in this life to generations of faith in their family. They make plans for kids and grandkids to make a difference. Abraham was making a plan. Jacob made a plan. Joseph made a plan that took 400 years to come to fruition. But he looked 400 years down the road and he said, there's going to be people of faith 400 years from now. And when you leave this place, take my bones with you because we're going back to the promised land where God told us we would end up. Heroes of faith, man, we look forward to heaven. But we also look forward to generations of faithful life on earth. Faith is not just for you, it's for others as well. Abraham trusted God for himself and for Isaac and for Jacob. Jacob blessed his sons and Joseph looked toward a day when God would fulfill that promise. To be people of faith is to realize we stand in a long line of people of faith. To tell my story is to realize my story is but one chapter in the book of the story of God's people. And we look ahead to preserve that influence for generations to come. So 400 years from now, what difference will your faith and my faith make? 400 years from now, what will people look back and say, the Henderson Church of Christ, because of what they did 400 years ago, it made a difference. What influence will your faith have in the next generation or the next two generations or three, or four, or beyond. We see heroes of faith make their decisions by faith. You read through Hebrews chapter 11. There's folks who decide how to raise their kids because of their faith. They make parenting decisions in faith. There's folks who make financial decisions because of their faith. They choose how to use their money because of their faith. There's folks who make educational decisions because of their faith. Folks who decide about work because of their faith. We see that their faith impacted every aspect of their life. And they realize that parenting and finances and work and family and education, those are all opportunities to live a life of faith. You are the hero of your story. So make it a story of faith. Because that's really the truth. That, that, that's really where things all boil down. You are the hero of your story. But if you tell your story, you'll realize God is the hero of it. The reading we had this morning from Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. As you tell your story, can you tell the story of a living God? A God who's not a myth or, or a legend, a God who's not dead or 2,000 years ago he did cool stuff, but a God who's alive and active in your life, a God who answers your prayers a God who cares and works in your life today. You must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He cares. And that leads us to a natural question we got to ask. What's your quest? You're the hero of your story, but what's your quest? Are you seeking God? More than anything else, heroes of faith say, I want to know God. I want to know God as my Lord and Savior more than anything else. That's my quest. God's not dead. He's got a myth. He's real and he really cares about you. And heroes of faith say, I want to know the Lord. And so as we talk about this is my story, telling our story, will it be a story of coming to know the Lord? This morning, there's a few challenges I want to leave you with. Appreciate those heroes of faith that have played a part in your story. There might be some folks that, that you need to express some gratitude to. Maybe somebody that, that you need to, to say thank you to because of the role they played. And maybe as you look, it's simply something you express some gratitude to God and say, God, thank you for putting that person in my life. Coming up here in just a few weeks, we're going to have Friends and Family Day. On Friends and Family Day, we're going to take a moment to honor our elders as a church family just to say thank you to those folks who have played such a pivotal role in our church family. 
Our elders really are heroes of faith. They, they have led and guided us through difficult times. They have been shepherds to our flock. And so as a church family, we'll take a moment to say thank you for that. But maybe in your own life, you say, you know what? Here's some heroes of faith. Appreciate them. And then learn from their example. Because your hero of faith in your life chose to step up and lean in and chose to get involved, maybe when it would have been easier to do nothing, maybe when they just didn't have to, but somebody said, I'll care enough to be involved. Learn from their example. Be a hero of faith to your family and your friends. Be that person who steps up and leans in when it might be easier to walk on by. And maybe that means you do that at church. Maybe there's an opportunity here and you could tell your story. Man, when I was a kid, there was that VBS. There was that one teacher. There was that one person who made a difference. And maybe years later, you still remember their name and their face and you remember that moment like it just happened yesterday. Somebody needs you to be that person. Somebody needs you to step up and say, hey, I'll teach, I'll help. In just a few weeks, we'll also have a teacher appreciation dinner. We appreciate everybody who signs up and, and volunteers to help teach in our classes. And, and we need teachers. You can talk to Micah about that. And maybe you say, you know what? I, I remember a parent or a grandparent, an aunt or an uncle or somebody who was like family who took me to church, who taught me the truth. And maybe there's somebody in your life that needs you to be the person who says, come to church with me. Come sit with me. Come learn with me. Ask me your questions. We'll study together. Maybe there's somebody in your life that was just a friend. They weren't in a parent kind of role, but they were a friend, and they invited you, and it made all the difference. Is there somebody you can take to lunch and just say, hey, can we talk about your faith? Can I pray for you? Can I pray with you? Is there somebody that needs a note of encouragement, somebody just to say, hey, I see you. I acknowledge the struggle that you're going through right now. Maybe as you look around, you say, well, there's some stuff I feel like I, I need to point out, some things I need to say. And before you complain, before you point out, hey, here's how you can do better, would you make a commitment to say five kind and encouraging words to the person you're about to complain to? And make it 10 if that person is an elder. Or would you make a promise to say, you know what, I'm going to build up. I'm going to encourage and love on folks. And make a difference. Because you know what? Somebody encouraged you. Somebody loved on you. Somebody cared enough to make sure that you were faithful. So appreciate the heroes in your story and be a hero to somebody else. And this morning, will you trust God with your story? Every single person in Hebrews chapter 11 that faith hall of fame, those Bible heroes, the folks, man, when I was growing up, we, we put them on flannel boards. I'm that old, all right? Those folks that, that we made Veggie Tale movies about, those folks that, that we told stories about, they make all the Bible story books for kids. Those heroes, they all came to God broken, broken by their own sinfulness broken by their own pride and poor decisions. They brought him their problems, their disappointments, their doubts, their struggles. As you read their stories, they're not perfect people. But they trusted God with their story. They trusted God to work in their life, and God worked in them such that they are those heroes of faith that you and I love to read about and tell their stories about now. And so as you look at their life, could I encourage you to follow their example, to trust God with your story? To see what he can do with your life? To bring him your, your broken life marred by sin with all your problems and struggles and you say, I don't know if, I'm not sure I can be good enough. I'm not sure I really have all the answers. Would you just say, Lord, I trust you. And I'm sorry because I haven't lived like I should. I, I repent of my sins. And I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. That's the only hope I've got. I can't save myself, but Jesus, Jesus died on the cross to save my, sin, my soul from my sins. 
This morning, would you trust God with your story to say, God, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do. And maybe that involves becoming a Christian, taking the first step. When you repent of your sins and confess your faith in Jesus as the Son of God, you can be baptized to have those sins washed away. You're baptized into Christ. God adds you to the church. It's that initial step of faith. And maybe this morning it's time for you to do that. Time to say, Lord, I trust you. I'll start walking with you today. Or maybe you're a child of God. You've been walking with the Lord for a while. But as you tell your story, it's a story that involves getting sidetracked or derailed or off course. And this morning you say, I need to repent and return. I need to come back. I need to be restored. If you need to come to the Lord or come back to him, if we can help you, won't you come right now as we stand and sing? Wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall this praise begin? Taking away my burden, setting my spirit free. For the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea. Thank you for this day, the blessings there. Thank you, Father, for this lesson we had, this great lesson on faith today. Father, please help me to increase my faith, Father, and to do thy will. Be with those, Father, who are not able to be here. Be with the sick ones, Father. Be with the ones who are not here on their own account, Father. Help help me and others to be able to say something that might want to make them want to come back and be with us. Lord, Father. Guide, guard, and direct us and forgive us of our sins.
Jesus' name I pray. Amen.